Hi everyone. It's been quite a while since my last video, and I apologize for my extended absence. I had to take some time out for personal and professional reasons, but I'm finally emerging from my hibernation, and I'll have some new research and footage for you all shortly. I hope you're all well, and that you enjoy this video about the Hearthstone research. I'm here at my friend Howard's house, and uh, he's got quite the growing collection of Hearthstones, which will I'll take you down the line so you can see what he's collected. Uh, some real, some real beauties here that are really showing a lot of what I've shown in many videos. This one, for example, got the overall harp shape and this tapering in and a curved underside. Sometimes you get one side that's like a knife edge. You get a flattened top, and oftentimes there'll be indentations or creases there. That's a, that's a beautiful one, bigger and flat. We'll just go down the line here, take a look at some of these that, that stand out. This would no doubt look good under underwater. Fleshy quality would come alive. The faceting is another thing, these three planes. There's your indentation at the top. It can be a discoloration or a dent inward or a crease or an actual hole, and on occasion they'll even show chambers. All three of these. This is what's known as a sulcus line, and it's where the overlapping portions of the, of the heart meet. That one shows the hint of blood vessels. Again, harp shape. There's the remains of the aorta and the vena cava on top. Curved underside. That's a nice one. Little iron attached to the back there from the, the remains of the blood. Now we're going back up the other side. As you can see, it's the same, the same pattern repeating itself. Tried to wear a harness so the phone would be more still, but it was too far out in front so I couldn't handle the rocks. But there you can see, I mean, that's, explain that with erosion, huh? There's that knife edge, the curved underside, the indentation at the top. And they're complete rocks, they're not broken. You'll see in a second here, we have some examples of, of the alternatives, which is when they're fractured or broken. And a lot of them will have this twist at the bottom, which is like a propeller turn, because of the, the spiraling contraction of the heart, the way the heart contracts. Here, you've got the, the interventricular sulcus. The, and the sulcus on the back side. So you get, on the front you have the long, long one going down, and on the back you'll often have one or even two going like this where the heart folds together. <clears throat> so, pretty, pretty clear reoccurring re pattern. See the indentation at the top and this curving inward, tapering in on the sides, with the harp shape. Here you see what they look like when they're fractured. This is something I've discussed as well when there's an indentation, when something has come to rest up against it, like a broken rib, for example, the rib cage, uh, while the, the heart is still malleable before it's turned to, turned to stone. Blood vessel, common thing. If it was just erosion, why would it have this fractal pattern to it, like a like a tree branch? Well, the reason is the blood vessels grow in that fashion. It's 
There's your <laughs> indentation at the top. The pulmonary arteries enter from the sides. So harp shape, tapering inward, flattened top, pulmonary artery openings at the top, you get the vena cava. The bottom will be either flat or curved inward typically. And they can be clumpy and, and thick. They can be long and narrow. They can be faceted. They can be flattened like that big first one that I showed you. They can be fleshy. This underwater would come alive. There's your indentation again. Flattened bottom. And there's your the crease there for the sulcus line. That's a beauty. And again, there's that curved underside. This one, if you put it in the water, you see these little micro blood vessels just come to life. That one's got the remains of the, the reddish blood. So there's a front and an up because that's how they, they grow in the body. And this shape comes on because of a combination of both compression, but also the contraction of the heart, because when we die, our hearts go into rigor mortis, just like all the other muscles of the body. So there's a there's a contraction of the the muscle fibers that um, sulcus line, indentation at the top. Here you got two aorta and the vena cava. So that contraction leads to the spiraling, but also to a flattening or a curving inward of the backside. And you can see that in this animation. Look at that. This is what I meant at the beginning when I said proof of concept. So all the different species of animals have slightly different shaped hearts, but it's all the same theme over and over again. It's the, it's the overall form that changes depending on on the species of the heart and the the phase of contraction and whether or not it's come to rest you know with pressure mainstream geology wants us to believe that these take on this form over and over and over again with such specificity because why because they're lumps of clay that have hardened on their way to becoming metamorphic rock so they've got a, a hardness to them and uh, yeah and they just just naturally get this this shape to them I guess it's it's like magic this is gorgeous look at this one so even without picking it up I already knew look at that there's the propeller I was talking about see that that twisting that thin knife edge that's a beauty again these this one in particular would really come to life underwater and it's a beautiful collection he's got, huh? Look at all of them. Whee! <laughs> and, and the hits just keep on coming. So these aren't so distinct in the shape, but if you if you realize that all the hearts the top half of the heart is going to be wide compared to the narrow half 
even in the clumpier ones, it'll be that way. Now these, I suspect, are kidneys, and you can see, I'll bet, oh, that one's got a, that one's got the indentation on the top, so maybe that is a heart. But these have that telltale entry point at the middle of, of the kidney, which is exactly where the blood vessels go in and out of the kidneys. So I get that question a lot. What about hearts? I mean, what about, uh, what about livers? What about kidneys? What about the rest of the organs? And they're there as well. But I've focused on the hearts because they're so distinct in the way that they look. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know about them all, but there are a ton that match the uh, the patterns that I've been showing in, in my videos. There's your sulcus line. A lot of them have that, that crease or opening at the top. So at some point, when you find enough of these, you would think it would become some kind of a mathematically significant thing, statistically, that isn't explained by just lumps of clay randomly being compressed and then taking on this shape that, that's so specific that can be found over and over and over again. I found a couple of, of blackened ones, so that's an interesting interesting uh, phenomenon. Don't know why. Creatures that have different color blood, perhaps? You know, like, imagine the horseshoe crab, not that these would come from crabs, I'm not suggesting that, but the horseshoe crab has blue blood that's, I think it's as expensive as gold. <laughs> that's a beauty, that, look at that. So tell me how this happens rolling around in a river bottom, just natural erosion is going to lead to this shape over and over again. I have half a dozen that have exactly this shape back at my office. And it's very delicate, it's very specific, it's got that twisting at the bottom. Yeah. Interventricular sulcus. And look at that, little discoloration indentation at the top, right where it should be. So it's the point now where I can pick up a rock and I can maybe only even see part of the rock and I've already gotten enough of the rock uh, in view to, to guess what the remainder of the rock is going to look like and very often I'm right and I pick up the rock and it, you know, it reveals the, the remainder of a number of different anatomical features. As you can see from his collection, Howard's extremely passionate about the biogeology and heartstone subjects. He recently went on the Modern Day Debate Channel to debate young versus old earth theories, and he used biogeology and the mud fossil topics as evidence for a younger earth. The debate was over two hours long. I'll post the link in the video notes below. These were Howard's opening statements. Considering that he's a layman and was up against some very tough competition, I thought he had some good things to say. Biogeology, it supports the theory that Earth is only thousands of years old instead of billions. And today I have the great pleasure to present the heart-shaped stone phenomena. So yeah, the heart-shaped stone phenomena, which is that there's a difference between when we see rough rock, which when it's broken into smaller pieces, it tends to maintain its original color and detail. Whereas smooth stones, pebbles, appear to be fully intact due to them having a pale skin, which make any fractures clearly visible, as the inside tends to be darker. Similar to how organs have a skin and a serous fluid around them to protect from abrasion. There doesn't seem to be any transitional stones between the two categories that I've named which suggests that smooth stones have a different origin than the rough cut rock. Heart-shaped stones can be found either along the coast 
in valleys, riverbeds, or buried in mud. Many of these smooth stones have the shape of a harp, which is its most common form, which in its most common form has a wide flat top and inward tapering sides, as does the heart throughout all kinds of different creatures. This, the, same, the exact same pattern can be found in stones of all sizes with multiple matching features. We can find many external and internal correlations to the anatomy of a heart in each heart-shaped smooth stone. So, openings, creases, or indentations are located on or near the top, which could be the remains of the aorta and the vena cava openings. The bottom point is slightly twisted, which could be due to spiral contraction of the heart muscle supposing that the, these are petrified hearts. The front is usually rounded or multifaceted, whereas the backside is most often flat or at best slightly concave. We find a wide range of faded meaty colors or black, maybe because there are some blue blood creatures and the court we see running throughout could be petrified fat. Branching out red colored lines or water eroded channels could be the remains of what was once the blood vessels. As you can see, we do see normal random water erosion and the same stone we see a more biological looking water erosion. And there's deposits of iron ore inside and outside, as we know, hemoglobin in the blood. And the isthmus, which divides the larger valves, can also be found on some stones. And remains of inner chambers, where we can see trabecular carne, which is a bumpy internal surface of the chambers. Here is the full list of the correlations that we have found so far which we share to help the open source investigation either get verified or refuted. Other smooth stones resemble organs like kidneys, livers, and spleens, but they're hard to distinguish as they have less features than the heart-shaped stones, whereas gall stones and kidney stones may have petrified into opal and agate stones, and geodes might be petrified testicles. Mike Wilkerson from the YouTube channel Stallium7 theorizes that fatty tissue may transmutate into crystalline material, and he's collected a potential half lobe of a petrified brain, as we can see iron ore exactly where the majority of blood is located. And people found a vitrified whale brain, which was also full of corpse, which would be expected due to the brain being mostly fast being mostly fatty tissue, as there are many examples online of uh, even wood we can see that's petrified. So it's nothing new. And we've also got historical evidence that flesh can petrify in a short time with Hiralamo Segato, who was best known for his work in the petrification of human cad cadavers. And we know experiments that can change fats and oils into alcohol and soap with just heat just like we can change sand and ceramics into glass. There's also the chance that Robert Plott was correct in his initial conclusions about the fossils he's discovered being flesh and not bone. And there is very good evidence that the theory of dinosaurs was invented because it's profitable for museums and also a genius way to cover up evidence of giants and dragons which causes us to ignore the mountains of evidence that can be observed worldwide. We know that blood travels throughout our bones, which supports the idea that large stones with fractal channels and iron ore deposits may be fragments of Titan's bones, 
Although some formations might just inspire pareidolia, there are carvings, artifacts, and photograph evidence to support the idea. And when facing with so many detailed examples, it becomes hard to deny the probability. We can also see the temples and pyramids that have been or are still being excavated. Thousands of star fortresses that, that have been covered with mud and left in ruins, even when situated on the top of a mountain. And there's around 20 underwater cities and megalithic constructions that we know of and petrified trees standing upright throughout multiple layers of strata, all which support the idea of a worldwide flood, as mentioned in the Bible, the Epic of Gilgamesh, over 500 myths and the Quran, plus artifacts found in Egypt, etc., that all portray a firmament dividing the waters from above from the waters below, as demonstrated in the experiment known as Star in a Jar, which in which a bubble in water can create light from having the right frequencies passing through it. Let there be light. And this could also explain the dark rift that we see in the night sky. Thank you very much. Yeah. A lot of them to look at, and there it is again, that flattened curved underside with an indentation at the top. So quite a quite a beautiful collection and very well organized, I would have to say. And um yeah, it's the work of my friend Howard Stirrup. He's made some videos on the subject as well. I posted a few of them on my on my channel. And uh, yeah, proof of concept. A very clear, defined, repeating pattern that goes beyond cherry picking. I mean, it is cherry picking in the sense that you got to spot them and, and pull them out, but it's not cherry picking in the sense that this is this is showing a very, very specific, reoccurring, repeatable pattern over and over again that matches up with the theory that these are petrified hearts. What do you think? Leave some comments below. Hope you're all well. Take care. Keep your heart soft. They work better that way. <laughs>